Welcome to Live at Five. I'm Alexis Dennehy and I have here today Dr. Rachel Hannum. How are you, Rachel? I'm doing really well, thank you, Alexis. How are you? I am also well. I have you to thank for bringing this topic to me and um, the work of Jill Bolte Taylor. I'm really keen to hear the practices that you have in store for us, Rachel. Um, but as a little bit of background for listeners, Jill Bolte Taylor is a Harvard trained neuroanatomist and she had a stroke um, at the ripe age of 37. And during that time, uh, the hemorrhage on the left side of her brain uh, gave her an experience where she really couldn't talk. Uh, she really uh, lost a sense of identity, but she had uh, quite um, spiritual experiences. So she's now uh, written a couple of books, um, My Stroke of Insight or A Stroke of Insight. Do you remember My Stroke of Insight. My I think. And there's, insight. A, there's a TED talk with the same name. Mm -hmm. And Whole Brain Living. Whole Brain Living. Yeah. And uh, so fascinating story, but even more fascinating that she's translated it to this body of work, which uh, Rachel and I are sinking our teeth into. So this will be the first of many conversations uh, that we have on this topic. And uh, we're, we're, we're going to thinking... nerd out on neuroscience. Oh, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. And it's so relevant for where our body of work is moving as we um, both come from a background of science but have been interested in how we bring our spiritual practices to to our um, professional lives and the thinking that is uh, that our you know that our culture is is heavily left brain dominant so how do we introduce uh, more practices that open us up to the right side. And that's what we're going to be exploring today. Indeed. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. That's summary mm -hmm. of, yeah. Well, I love that Jill Bolte Taylor and a few others like Ian McGilchrist, who I'm about to read his book, The Master and His Emissary, and the master being the left brain and the emissary being the right brain, who talks about how our left brain dominance has actually um, shaped Western culture and a power over culture, which very much relates to Marshall Rosenberg's work, the founder of NBC, who was interested in transforming the culture from a power over to a shared power, power with culture. Yes. So some of the neuroscientists like Ian McGilchrist are now writing about what's going on with our brain and how we can um, use our knowledge of our own brains to um, integrate and um, yeah, use use both hemispheres, use our whole brain, as you say. Um, and it's definitely worth checking out Jill Balti Taylor's TED Talk if you haven't already, because it's phenomenal. Um, and I just, yeah, I want to leave people to read the books, watch the TED Talk, but let's get into some, um, like maybe the basics of the left hemisphere and right hemisphere. Just, Good idea. And yeah. maybe by way of a couple of metaphors, because the old stereotype, probably from the 80s, you know, after they did, in the 70s, they did some, uh, surgeries on severe people with severe epilepsy where they cut the corpus callosum which is the only kind of cells that join the left and right hemispheres of the brain if you watch Jill's TED talk you'll see her holding a human brain she opens it up and shows you the corpus callosum and it's fairly narrow and she <laughs> says in her TED talk you can see these two hemispheres are quite separate apart from the corpus callosum in the epilepsy patients in the 70s they severed the corpus callosum mm. and they learned a lot then about the hemispheres mm. and people with this who'd had this operation would pick up a shirt from the rack at a shop with their left hand and their right hand would put it back and it seemed like the two hemispheres had very different preferences very different mm -hmm. ideas very different tastes very different feelings mm -hmm. so the mm -hmm. idea is we have these different characters in our own brains and we need to learn to relate to these different characters inside mm -hmm. of us mm -hmm. yeah but um, it's not as simple as people thought in the 80s. It's not just left brain is logical, right brain is creative. We actually use both sides of our brain in doing a, many of our tasks. Mm, it's mm. more like this. Jill Bolte taylor explains in her book, Whole Brain Living, that um, the left brain sees the trees and the right brain sees the forest. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, if you look at a forest from a distance, maybe when you've been driving through the mountains, you can see the whole forest, but if you stand still and look, you can maybe focus on a single tree. Mm -hmm. 
So the left brain will focus in on the detail and find the individual tree, but the right brain will see the forest. And one of the metaphors she uses is the eagle. She says the eagle that soars across the landscape, it's taking in the whole landscape. Humans do this as well. But when it spots its prey, like a little prairie dog, oh, it you know goes in for the, and it can see that prairie dog from hundreds of meters away and it can keep its eagle eye on that and then swoop in but then it can go back to looking at the whole landscape again mm -hmm. so our right brain is the forest mm -hmm. our left brain is the detail um, and therefore our left brain is good at detecting threat finding opportunities um, planning problem solving analyzing all of those executive functions mm -hmm. which we'd be lost without in this world Mm. Um, and the right brain is intuition. It's taking in the whole scene. It's the interconnectedness of everything. But the right brain's not very good at organizing the detail. Mm -hmm. So we yes. need both. This, um, I think, is quite interesting in uh, in relation to the body. Uh, given that uh, you know, there are times we all have. You know, if we're anxious or fearful where it's hard to find words. Um, I think most people can relate to that. Yes. When they're about to give a presentation and they go blank, uh, but often, you know, it happens in, in this space where there's obviously trauma in the body and no words to yes. express the experience, but it, it comes, it comes out whether, you know, whether it's just a release uh, or whether it's tears or, sensation yeah. heat can be anything yeah um, and so, the problem is we either can't we there seems to be two big problems as, yeah. as you are talking I'm, I'm seeing two big problems mm. one is people can get absolutely lost in their left brain thinking analysis mm -hmm. paralysis mm -hmm. and, you know, intellectualize things and not feel their feelings the other problem is almost the other end of the extreme where we can become so lost in the physiological um hyper arousal that we cannot use our language to serve us, mm. to express what's going on for us. You know, mm. our language can fail us mm. when we need it sometimes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. So we can have both problems. We can be either just totally swept up in our physiological experience and not have access to logic or hyperlogical and not have access to our feelings. And whole brain mm. living is about being able to be flexible and and kind of have choice, have choice around which, where we're operating. Yes, of course. Uh, yeah, integration is my understanding. And like you say, being able to call on different parts of my mind according to the various needs. Uh, but I found it intriguing to learn that the right hemisphere thinks in pictures and the left hemisphere thinks in language. And as yes. you just told me just now, Broca's area, the area responsible for speech is there in the left and the Wernicke, side. The Broca's and the Wernicke areas, which are language, they're only on the left side. Yeah, that's incredible, um, which again lends itself to art therapy, to um, Jungian practices around symbolism and even dreams, which uh, would be right hemisphere ways of experiencing ourselves and even understanding ourselves. So. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm, what I'm hearing what you're saying is uh, both are essential um, and let's explore. And I hear you've got some practice yes. for us. Yes. Today. So I'd love everyone to get a pen mm. and a piece of paper. It only needs to be that big or mm -hmm. larger, whatever you've got. Mm -hmm. So if you can grab a pen and a piece of paper and on that piece of paper mm -hmm. at the top, uh, or you can have two separate pieces of paper for this exercise if you've got two pieces of paper. But with your dominant hand, which is the right hand for most people, I want you to write, what would I like to hear right now? So you can write that pretty quickly with your dominant hand. So I've just written, what would I like to hear right now? Mm, nice hand. What do, I, what do I need to hear or what would I like to hear? Mm -hmm. Now, on that same bit of paper or a new piece of paper, if depending on how much room you'd like, use your non-dominant hand. Mm -hmm. and don't worry about how messy it is. Mm -hmm. Because here's what my left handwriting looked like. Pretty messy. 
Don't worry about how messy it is. Using your non-dominant hand, answer this question. I'll give everyone a minute to do that. And you're going to have to show us what you've written. Okay. Uh, <laughs> not the audience, that's your choice, but I want to know what you've written, Rachel. <laughs> um, okay. right, so use your, use your non-dominant hand. What would I like to hear right now? As we do this, I wonder if you'd be willing to just talk us through your experience of, you know, what, you know, what, what this practice um, facilitates or what it brings out or what it stimulates in, in you. Yeah. Well, um, as most people know, the left hemisphere largely controls the right side of the body and the right hemisphere of the brain largely controls the left side of the body. And the reason most of us are right-handed and left-handed people do tend to be more creative, according to research, most of us uh, are right-handed and it's because the language centers are in our left hemisphere, as we just discussed. Mm -hmm. When we go to write with our left hand or our non-dominant hand, we have to stop thinking and we, we change the way we think. We may be focused on our fine motor control, that could be very wobbly. We may have to write something much more simple. It may sound much more adolescent or childlike when we write with that non-dominant hand. Mm, yeah. And that's interesting because to get in touch with our inner child or our inner teenager is not always easy. And one strategy that some therapists recommend is writing with your non-dominant hand. And I know this is a practice you've used before, Alexis. Mm, I have. Yeah. Thanks, Rachel. I have. Um, I find it does. It, yeah, it's impossible. Well, I, I, it's very hard to not connect with my child, my inner, my child self when I'm doing this, you know, even just holding a pencil I feel more innocent and um, the critical mind I've noticed does come out very strongly. But if, uh, if we can persist, then we seem to just, you know, get absorbed in it. Once we're, once we're engrossed in what we're doing, then again, it's that childlike mindful play that play. Um, That's I don't, yeah, I don't think we tap it normally. Play is more of a right hemisphere activity. It's mm -hmm. lateralized on the right. So use your non-dominant hand to write to yourself in a playful and loving manner. Yeah. And if you would like to share with us what your non-dominant hand has written, we would love to hear it because yes. um, they're really, I find them quite precious little statements. You know, <laughs> I, I literally put no thought into mine. I just started writing and it's embarrassing, but I'll share what my non-dominant hand just like, this is literally, I found myself writing without thinking Please. <laughs> and it wrote, <laughs> and I was feeling very down earlier today, really yeah. flat. Yeah. I did this a few hours ago when I was feeling quite down and it wrote, Rachel, you are the best. Mm -hmm. And I was like, come on, there must be more. And then I wrote, be kind to yourself. And you can see it's kind of messy, but I kind of like that. It's actually, it's actually just very neat, really. It, it's so, yeah, well, sort of. It's so adolescent. You're the best. <laughs> That's what came out. <laughs> it's not normally how I would speak to someone or myself. You're it's the very best. strange. Well, that's the other thing too. I noticed that I went to be quite verbose and then I dropped a couple of words because I was like, oh, it's going to take too long. Yeah. <laughs> what did you write? What was yours? Yeah, mine is mine is actually not dissimilar. Mine says, I would like to hear that I am number one. <laughs> <laughs> I matter a lot to me and to you. And I, uh, yeah, I mean, it's kind of, um, it's quite vulnerable. <laughs> actually but it's so, the answer it's your answer to the question of what would I really like to hear right now yeah yeah I think that's a good one um and yeah. let's see if there's any answers in the comments and if there's nothing yet we can move on to the next little technique okay sounds good <clears throat> I'm gonna do a lot more writing with my left hand this week I found it quite I haven't done that for a long time and it's um quite sweet in a way it certainly takes you out of a sense of competence because you know it's so hard to do I just need to check us out here 
I've got you on silent for a moment, Rachel. I can probably check on my end. Okay. <laughs> oh, Catherine's, Catherine's has written, I love you. That's really oh, beautiful. That is lovely. And Emily says it's very interesting that she'll be giving it a go. Good okay. to know. I love you is very precious. That is, um, yeah. I mean, and Catherine, how does it feel to write those words? with your non-dominant hand, I wonder. Can you tell us how that feels? Mm. Now, while we're waiting for people to perhaps share what their left hand wrote back to their left brain, <laughs> your left hand is your right brain talking back to your left brain. Um, let's try one really quick one. Let's try covering our right nostril just by pressing down on the right nostril. Now I'm going to sound a bit nasally. Mm -hmm. Take three slow, deep breaths through the left nostril. And one more. And out. And if this becomes the thumbnail for this video, it's going to look very funny. <laughs> <laughs> or if anyone's just scrolled past, they'll be like, oh, moving now, right along. <laughs> if you've just done the left nostril breathing with us, or if you want to do the left nostril breathing later, just notice how you feel. Do you notice anything subtle when you do that, Alexis? Well, at the moment I'm feeling more sensation on my right nostril where it was closed, but um, I'd have to do it in a more subtle space, I think. Uh, I'm interested in, yeah, to learn about how that, how that influences us. I'm absolutely confident that there's a relationship between the breath and the nervous system. Well, we know that actually, we know that. So yeah, no doubt. Yeah, what and the hub of our nervous system is our brain and even breathing through the left nostril, they say, can mm -hmm. start to stimulate uh, more of the cells in the right hemisphere of the brain because of that crossover. I did quite a few earlier. I did about six or seven left nostril breaths. What I noticed is my thinking settled way down, you know, my language-based thinking. Mm -hmm. And I did get this nice feeling of kind of connectedness and calm. And mm -hmm. so, I mean, that's such an easy one, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And I know that there's a a yoga breathing technique where you breathe in through the left, out through the right, covering them over and then in through the right, out through the left, sort of alternating. Nadi Shodhana. Mm -hmm. What's it called? Nadi Shodhana. The Nadi is the energy lines running through the body. Yeah. Yeah, and I believe that is a good technique for this whole brain living Jill Balti taylor talks about. And if you're finding that your thinking is speeding up, speeding up, try five or ten of these left nostril breaths and, you know, see what happens. Everyone's different, mm -hmm. but it would be... Uh, interesting to give little things like this a go and see if you can experience yourself differently however subtly yes um and I think that a number of our listeners I know Catherine practices yoga so I'd be interested to hear uh also from our listeners whether you have any experiences where you're pretty confident that you're in your right brain and uh, how you notice that is quite distinct to your left brain. And Catherine says, yes, and we'll talk about that in a sec too. Catherine says she was surprised that I love you is what came out. It's not something she hears very often, so clearly it's something I'd like to hear more often. Well, that is good to know, Catherine, isn't it? <laughs> That's good to know. Um, if you Google how to switch on your right brain or how to increase activity in your right brain, You'll find the websites with the answer to this question all say very similar things like music, singing, dancing, yoga, mm. uh, art, drawing, creativity. Um, so, you know, you can try these things yourself. If you've never taken an art class, like a painting or a drawing class, but you've always thought you'd like to, maybe mm. give that a try. And then the other way we can switch on our right brain is doing simple tasks in a slightly different way, like with writing with our non-dominant hand. Hmm. Um, 
but just changing up how we do things, sitting in a different place, like getting, because the left brain loves routine, the left brain loves predictability, the left brain loves structure. Mm. So if you mix up your predictable structure a little bit, and I don't know, go and sit on the floor and eat mangoes naked, as Sark says in the name of her book, Eat Mangoes Naked. You know, if you just do something that gives you a different perspective on the world literally go and sit in a different place going to new places can switch on the right brain because it's novel Mm -hmm. and it's it's new and that's a creative experience Mm -hmm. in itself so taking a mundane activity and just changing it a bit because because of course that makes us become more mindful and mindfulness is a right brain activity Mm. i can't help but wonder how it relates um to the gender shift at the moment um, and you know my experience is that um, the right the right brain is more feminine um, you know the relation the relationship focus the quality the inter that interconnectedness the mm. emotional yeah yeah in contrast to the the single thought uh, the task orientation of the, the more masculine left side yes. Um, yeah, and the child, as, you, as you've mentioned, with the left-right hand, um, that the left side seems to be the adult, you know, the uh, accountable, responsible, contributing focus, and then the right side of the child, the, the play, the joy. the um, And anything that gives you a sense of play mm. and joy and um, awe, however Mm. subtle Mm. that will be your right brain cells Mm. kind of coming online again so this is why play Mm. and joy which is what music and art can can switch that on in us as well as Mm. well as movement Mm. Um, laughter comedy can be good for this reason because Mm. laughter will also bring that right hemisphere Mm. online a bit more and um story and imagery Imagery. Uh, really simple ways, even just, you know, exposure to imagery, uh, I find can really, it's quite a stimulating experience, um, but in a, in a different way to the way that I might read a journal article and find that stimulating in a different way. Uh, That's right. Precise. Different, yeah, different parts of your brain will light up depending mm-hmm. on what you're reading, won't they? Mm-hmm. One quick thing, when I was a primary school teacher, I used to do a thing called brain gym with okay. my kids. And one of the brain gym things we did is I used to get them to clasp their hands together and put their thumbs together in front of their eyes, like between their eyes. And Mm -hmm. I used to get them to make figure eights with Mm -hmm. their thumbs and they'd have to track their fingernails, track their thumbs and then get wider and wider Mm -hmm. and wider. I'm not tracking it, but you can try it and just track. And what it does is it makes your eyes move from side to side to side and this can wake up your right brain spatial kinesthetic capacity just by moving your eyes I like that feeling you like the feeling yes and I can't help but notice the difference my right side feels much stronger Uh, this area here is is quite quite weak for me that's very interesting Rachel and quite um, an engaging little practice right it's beautiful. And I used to get my kids when I taught grade four, I, when they came, come in after second break, all, especially on a windy day, they're all hyperactive. Yeah. We do these brain gym activities really? and it would just settle them down and all the, you know, eat, 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 eat from lunchtime, which probably would have been their left brains going, it's not fair. That was my ball or whatever. <laughs> just mm-hmm. settle down. And they got back into this sort of more balanced brain we used to do other things like tapping some of the acupressure points on the body a bit like we do in emotion focus um emotional freedom technique some people might have heard of emotion freedom technique where we do tapping mm-hmm. all of this is to and sometimes we can we can do opposite side mm-hmm. of the body um tapping techniques we could do a whole other live stream on tapping as a mm-hmm. technique mm-hmm. and uh, again that's to get the two sides of the brain kind of working uh, more together so yeah. there's all these cool ways we can do this yeah yeah and you can just make them up so speaking uh, of play and fun should we tell people about our workshop series good idea um now 
We'll be uh, exploring, Rachel and I will be running a series of three workshops uh, where we get an opportunity to explore from a theoretical perspective as well as a practical perspective this whole brain living. So stay tuned for those dates. We'll be launching those very soon. Um, and yeah, we're interested to uh, tap into more, uh, I guess it's a body-based wisdom um, and explorative approach to working with our brains, uh, all grounded in neuroscience. So if you're interested, please stay tuned. Uh, you can also join our uh, community page, which is the yoga and psychology community. Uh, that's here on Facebook. So I'll include the link below. And um, yeah, we'll be launching our workshop series very soon. So please stay tuned so you don't miss out on a place. Yes, we will put it on your Facebook page, my Facebook page, on the yoga and psychology community page. Mm -hmm. And because it's something new that we've not run before, we'd love to see some familiar faces from last year's workshop series that we did on emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. If that's something that people would be keen we're not sure what we're going to call it maybe something like is your brain driving you crazy uh, <laughs> or maybe whole brain living or maybe something totally um different it's going to be fun that much we know yeah so i actually need to get going uh on time today but um was there any other techniques you wanted to share with us just as a, a little <laughs> closing practice rachel um there was, I just remembered yeah. one. And yeah, when you, yeah. when you Google, when you Google something like, you know, activating my right hemisphere, which I was yeah. Googling earlier, quite a few of the websites talk about this. I'd only heard about it recently, the kitchen sink technique. Okay. This is particularly if you want to do some creative writing, which I know a lot of people like to do, whether it's journaling or poetry or whatever. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The kitchen sink technique says get five or six books from your bookshelf, any books, just randomly, okay. open them at a random page, yeah. read a couple of paragraphs from each one yeah. and, and synthesize them, like make sense of what it's saying. You might've read the books before and do this with four or five books, put them down, go and do something that's largely non-verbal, like walking, yoga, knitting, gardening, cooking mm -hmm. and for like 20, 30 minutes and then come and sit back down again and, and see what comes because in that half an hour, Mm -hmm. Your right brain, which is more unconscious body-based processes, may have sort of synthesized and knitted together some mm. thoughts and ideas which wouldn't have come to you through intellectual analysis. And a mm -hmm. lot of writers and musicians I've talked to talk mm. about having a muse. I've got one uh, client who composes music and my daughter also composes music. And they say, I don't know where it comes from. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the muses are kind to me and they're there and sometimes they're not there. But on a brain level, it's writer's block is probably we're just too stuck in our left hemisphere. Okay. And so the kitchen sink technique is to kind of you know, deal with the left brain, but then go and kind of go into the right brain and see if you can get some new thoughts some new ideas pretty cool huh i like it what a clever brain we have what a clever organ right yeah oh, it's so amazing brilliant. yes and no ai can compete <laughs> I am let's convinced. hope that's true i think that is true <laughs> i am convinced let's prove it let's prove that theory right all right well i'm really excited to do this brain workshop series with you later in the year um alexis it, if people are busting to know it should probably be the first sunday of september the first sunday of october and the first sunday of november fantastic so if you're coming to our practice group on the last sunday that will prompt you to come to the first sunday so yes mm. stay tuned everybody we would love to see you in the flesh yes. uh thank you for sharing your knowledge your insight and your reading with us rachel uh, really gorgeous and for the practices today i'm definitely going to be writing with my non-dominant hand that's um that's fun yeah it is it is actually quite fun, really it? fun yeah yeah I know. Okay. Well, I'll see you on Tuesday morning for our walk. I will look forward to that. Good night, everybody. Thanks for coming, okay. Catherine, Emily, yes. and good night, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye.